Welcome back guys to another installment of Tone Quest. Hope you guys are doing really, really well with your friends and family during this holiday season, wherever you are. This is probably going to be the final episode of the series and what a way to end the year. It's been a phenomenal year for the channel and for me, considering all the fantastic feedback that you guys have given me for all the presets that I put out. Today is none other than Eddie Van Halen's Balance Stone. This stone has been requested on the channel multiple times and uh, I haven't got to it so far, probably because of the fact that there wasn't enough uh, good backing track available for me to actually you know jam on it or to you know replicate the tone i usually prevent myself from praying over original tracks uh, so that you can hear the tone clearly but for this one i did not find a good uh, backing track as i said and so i had to play over the original music so hopefully you heard the isolated guitar in the beginning of the video and hopefully that makes some sense to you as to how the preset is sounding. What we're going to do as we always do is go into the uh, Axe Edit and dial it in. So in, in case you are a long term subscriber, you know how these uh, videos go about. I usually walk you through the preset and I also share the preset on Axe Change. So don't go anywhere. Watch the whole video. I'm going to share some tips that I learned while dialing this. Again, this is an attempt. I nowhere claim that I have even 1% of what Eddie has. And this is something that I'm trying out and hopefully you guys like it and appreciate it. Let me know in the comments. All right, let's dive right in. So what we have in front of me is the Axe Edit as always. I've got a signal chain linked up and I've got nothing but the DI signal going in right now. The guitar is an Ernie Ball Music Man JP15. Uh, the pickups are stock and the strings are Ernie Ball regular slinky strings. Uh, the action's pretty low. I'm playing on the bridge pickup uh, most of the song and I believe uh, except for the tapping section in the beginning, I use the neck pickup but this demo is pretty much gonna be on the bridge pickup, to be honest. So when it comes to this tone, uh, there are so many things out there and that's the reason probably it gets really confusing for me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the amp and the cab, of course, and uh, we're gonna go from there. I read many places that there are different amps that he's been using for this record, specifically this track, track which is Aftershock. Um, I believe I settled down on uh, modded plexi is what I read across various forums. Although, uh, to be honest, I started with the 5150 blue 100 watt uh, amp and then I deviated from it later because I found the plexi modded, modded plexi sounded much more richer and much more punchier. So we're gonna start with the amp. The amp is, as I said, going to be the Brit Brown uh, amp, which is the famous modded plexi or the brown sound amp that we have in the Axedit, uh, Axe FX2, sorry. Everything's to default and I'm gonna add a cab as well. The cab is gonna be uh, 5153 mix number two. I'm not gonna mic it, I'm leaving everything at default and this is how we are sounding with all everything to default. The volume's at full, the tone's at full, I'm on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Alright, so it's sounding pretty muffled up, it's sounding pretty bassy and a lot of mids in there. I think low mids to be honest. So it's not the tone we are after, we are after a tone which is very chiny, chimey and bright and it cuts really hard through the mix and you can hear all of the notes ringing very very clearly and uh, you know Eddie likes to play stuff like open chords. <laughs> So we want those chords to really shine out and shimmer throughout the mix and that's what we're going to try and do. So first things first, I'm going to go into the amp. This is not going to be a heavy preset by any means, although he might have used heavier presets or heavier tones on different songs on the album. We're going to go with a slightly crunchier sort of a sound. So I'm going to bring the grain down to input drive to around 4. The bass I'm not going to touch, the mids are going to go up to 6.5 and the treble is going to go up to 8.6. I want a lot of treble in this preset. Uh, mind you, my guitar is more mid-ranged, so I'm going to have more adjustments which are probably slightly more towards the treble side. So you might want to tweak those values to suit your guitar as well. That's what I found out as feedback from you guys uh, on other presets that I've shared. 
no worries it's going to be very very easy for you to tweak it so what we're going to do next is go to the presence and turn it up as well to 6.5 and then i'm going to bring the master volume down to 3.5 uh, this will all make sense later because we're going to have multiple layers in the you know at the in the signal chain uh, the next thing i'm going to do is also go into the cap and i'm going to change the mic to 57 dynamic here and i'm going to bring up the high cut all the way now with that done, this is how we're sounding. Sounding close, but it's still missing a lot of key ingredients to make it sound that full and rich. So what we're gonna do is add another cab which is going to be the second mix in, not an amp, come on. <laughs> Another cab, which is going to be uh, 5153 mix number one. I believe mix number two was the first one. This one, I'm going to keep it to 87A condenser mic. I'm going to bring the high cut down to 9200. I'm sorry, the low cut's also going to go up uh, around 40. And so is it for the first cab. We're going to bring it to 40 hertz both. And then I'm going to do what I should have done a long time back is to connect the signal chain with the cab. And now when I do that, obviously the master volume is going to go up because I've got a new you know, layer in the signal chain. So what I'm going to do is bring down the overall level not to 150 but minus 15 and this is how it's sounding now <laughs> So you can hear that certain aspects of that shimmer coming out now <laughs> But it's still not there what we're going to do is to add more presence we're going to go into the dynamic section of the amp and we're going to add some dynamic presence here i'm going to add dynamic presence to around two dynamic depth also i'm going to add to around four this is going to make the preset much more fuller and preamp dynamics uh, also at three i don't really know what that exactly does but that sh does give me a better tone and also i'm going to add an output compression as well around two as well so with that done, it should sound much more richer now. All right, that's sounding good. So what we're going to do next is add a PEQ block, which is a parametric EQ. Uh, what I'm going to do, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to raise a bit of the highs here to make it much more richer. So what we're going to do is add around 4500 Hz. Uh, the Q is going to be around 2.2 and the gain is going to go up to 5. Point, probably 8. I think so. And uh, frequency type I'm going to change to peaking of course I don't want that. So and then of course after this it should sound uh, much more sharper and much more brighter. <laughs> I know, I know, it's missing that thing you're waiting for. It's gonna come, don't worry. I'm talking about that even tide, pitch detune, shift, and all that stuff. I know, it's gonna come, don't worry. So what we're gonna add next is the chorus. It's gonna be an analog stereo. You could actually do without the chorus here, but for me, I added this, uh, smoothens the tone much more out for me. I'm gonna keep the tempo to around one trip. The tempo is set to 135 BPM in this case. The depth is gonna go up to 60%. And the LFO type, I'm going to change this sign so that I get the smoother curves in the chorus. And the mix is going to come down to around 20%. Also, I'm going to go into the tone section and bring the high cut all the way up. And the dimension mode is going to be set to high. And then what we're going to add next is the famous pitch detune. So what we're going to do is add the pitch block here and this is going to be set to effect type detune. And uh, now the settings for this, I've read many places online. Uh, it's minus, some say it's minus nine, some say it's minus nine and 11, some say it's minus 11 and plus 11. There are a variety of answers you can find and I would say use your ear and try to tune in the way you like to hear it. Don't worry about what others say. I went with minus nine and plus nine over here. 
And what I'm going to also do is add a bit of delay to both of these a 7 millisecond delay on the voice 1 and a 15 millisecond delay to voice 2. The high cut, I think I'm going to change a bit as well to around 15,200 maybe, somewhere around there. And then I'm going to bring down the mix to around 20%. Now with that done, this is how it should sound now. Enough of that playing. Let's play something else. Uh, what should we play? Uh, we should probably play something like this. That sounds delicious and it sounds, as I said, you can hear every note ringing out very, very well. So if you even turn down the master volume on your guitar and play a chord. You can almost hear every note ringing out very, very clearly. And that's the tone that I was after. And it works really well for me in this case. So what we're going to do as a final touch is add a reverb. Now. You can add reverb in the post as well in your DAW. What I think they used to use as a trick and the 80s recording style is that they used to add the reverb and pan it to the right and the guitars used to be panned to the left. Other way around for you because you're facing me. Uh, so what we're going to do is add the reverb, the reverb. I'm going to link it up first things first, then change the signal, uh, the effect type to a uh, London plate. I'm going to leave everything here except the quality. I'm going to change it to high and I'm going to change the mix to around 27%. Now notice this is sitting in another layer so that you can tweak the panning if you want to or you can change the levels as well. So with that done, uh, should add a bit of a smoothness and sort of a sustain there as well. So let's hear that. You can hear that, right? All right, that sounds pretty close. Uh, another trick to do is add a flanger in the beginning. I think he uses a flanger in the beginning of the song where he's playing that intro part. So what we're gonna do is add a flanger, uh, keep it to digital mono. I think everything here I did not touch at all. What I just did is bring the mix down to around 30%. And I think that sounds pretty good. So if you heard the other song, uh, Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do, I think the intro is a fantastic intro to play on this. So, but that's on a drop D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pitch block here. I've got a block saved, which is to drop D the guitar. Uh, I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna play the intro of that song. Hopefully it sounds good to you. And remember, this is software, shifting down the pitch so you're going to hear some differences so it's not going to pitch perfect but you'll get the idea so i'm going to use an advanced whammy here and go to d standard um, this block i created uh using a tutorial i think it's there on the xfx forums search for it as to how to change the pitch of your guitar so with that i'm going to use that technique that he uses in the song let's see if that sounds right <laughs> That sounds nice and that's the kind of tone I was looking for. Hopefully that sounds great to your ears as well. If you've been with me in the video so far, thank you so much to being this long and I'm gonna share one final trick that I used to 
you know, enhance the tone even further. This will help in creating the more 80s sort of a fuzzy tone. So what I did is actually use the air and the air frequency inside the room section of every cab block. Now, as per the documentation on Fractal side, I'll post a link there. What they say is that basically this emulates uh, the real sound of the amp and lets it through the cab. I don't know how that will work in the real life scenario. I don't own a cab, but uh, I've heard this term much before as well. And I would recommend use headphones to actually tweak this. You might not hear the real differences coming through when you use your speakers, but when you use a set of headphones, you'll be able to hear the differences coming through much more clearer. So what I'm gonna do is for the cab, first cab, I'm gonna change the, you know, the air to around 20% and I'm gonna change the air frequency as well to around 8800, uh, and this is how it's gonna sound. I had the flanger on, but that's okay. Switch it off, and go into the cab two, and again, go into the room, and change the air frequency to around 14%, and the air frequency, air, Change the air mix to around 14% and the air frequency to around 7560 hertz. And that should be it. If you have a guitar which has a coil tap feature, this preset will sound really, really good. So I have that feature in this guitar and I have a piezo as well, piezo, piezo, whatever you want to call it. I call it piezo. Uh, what you can do is actually go into the coil tap. I'm going to split these two pickups into single coils actually. And what I'm going to do is roll all the master volume quite a bit. And you can even get a more twangier kind of a spanky kind of a tone, strat like tone from the guitar. Probably a little more volume. That's pretty much it folks for this preset. Hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough and the preset demo as well. The playthrough is also there available on my channel. In case you haven't watched it, you can go and watch it right now. But I do, I do want to call out as a disclaimer that I have played over the original track in the actual playthrough because I could not find a good backing track, which I always do. But I really, really wanted to cover this preset because it's one of the most requested presets uh, that I've been asked for in the comment section. Thank you for making those requests. Uh, I do want to attend to every request whenever possible, but it purely boils down to, you know, how much time I have on my hands. This is not my full time job. I do this as a hobby and I do wish that I could do it full time. But, you know, I'm trying my level best to keep up with the with the extreme amount of content that everybody has been putting out. My friend Leon, for example, he puts out a video every day and he posted around 380 videos in this year and I have just posted around 20. <laughs> so you can see that the amount of content that I'm putting out. But for me, I think it takes a lot of time for me to sit down, work out every preset, make sure it's sounding good and make sure I roll it out and make sure I shoot it in the best of the quality possible in terms of audio and video so that you guys have the listening and the watching pleasure as well. Uh, thank you so much for being with me on the channel, long time subscribers. Thank you so much for this year. And if you haven't subscribed till now, I don't know what you're waiting for. There's lots and lots of content, lots and lots of presets out there that you can go and try. This is episode 12, so at least 12 presets for you to try. And I think I have some presets from other videos as well. Go into the exchange, look up the presets, give them a try. And if you use my presets in a live scenario or in a bedroom environment, just shoot me a link. I would really love to see how the preset sounds on your gear. 
and I'm always open to your feedback. Leave me your comments in the comment section below as to how you think the preset is and how you think what would you change in the preset if you wanted to. Feel free to change any of the items and let me know what sounds better. As I said, I'm not an expert at these presets. I'm just a guitar player like you trying to dial in some of the fantastic and famous tones from our decade or from the previous decade. And what a way, as I said, to end the year 2019. It's been a fantastic year in terms of your feedback. Keep the love flowing in and I'll make sure I keep the presets flowing in and I will see you guys in the next episode, hopefully in next year. Thank you so much for all the love and cheers and keep rocking. Bye bye.